To start off, the X-H2S has all the usual top-of-the-line camera aspects like a high-end viewfinder, a bright screen, weather sealing, a plethora of customizable buttons and dials. It's a great, great machine. Plus, there's even a fantastic little e-ink screen on the top that shows you your camera settings when it's on and your battery life when it's off. It's a small thing, but the more I use it, I was happy to be able to just glance down to see my settings and step up or step down a few stops without needing to actually move my camera up to my eye or within view of the screen. It's also really helpful when you just want to peer into your bag and see the battery status without turning your camera on and shuffling it out. It's seriously a small thing, but a very helpful piece of kit. Beyond that, like the X-H1 before it, there's a deep hand grip, lots of customizable modes, dedicated headphone, microphone jacks, and a full-size HDMI port. Plus, speaking of the battery before, the battery life is awesome. When it comes to specs with the X-H2S, there's not a lot to be disappointed with. It sits at the top of Fuji's lineup for a reason. Anyway, I shot three day-long events during my time with the camera. One was an 18-hole golf tournament, and the camera lasted the whole day that time. The event was mostly for fun with my friends, so I wasn't doing too much 4K60, with most of the day being shot at 24 frames per second, since I was playing around mostly with the new 18 to 120 millimeter power zoom lens, which is a treat. The other full day was a wedding, and I only needed to charge it twice, meaning I would have probably been able to get through that day with two, maybe three batteries, and the final big day was a Google event a few weeks ago, and that camera was a sniper on the show floor compared to the autofocus systems of the X-T3 or the X-S10 that I usually use. I'll also mention that while likely going to be underrated by a lot of people, that 18-120 to 120 power zoom lens works fantastic and it's weather sealed. It's sharp and the zoom is really unique to play with on a camera of this caliber. It's even par focal so you can lock focus and zoom in and out at will. Combined with great in-body stabilization on the X-H2S, the fantastic lens-based OIS on this optic is incredibly versatile. It's actually right here. I wish it came in at f2.8, but still, for fans of videography or photography and looking to get something unique, this is a really awesome lens to check out with a great range, and it's it's kind of really fun to use. That power zoom is is a blast. There's really no two ways around it. Moving back to the X-H2S, another big perk is the 6.2K open gate recording. This offers a much larger recording space, but it is locked to a maximum of 30 frames per second. Still, for talking head on camera moments like this, it's a lot more helpful by giving you more usable pixels to crop into and out of when you're editing. For anyone needing to cut content for both vertical and horizontal videos, this is a huge help as well. You can shoot up to 4K 120 frames per second on the X-H2S, which is a nice step up for Fujifilm. However, I mainly use the 4K 60 because that just is what I found looked the best. And to be honest, for the channel work that we do here with the product video on tech, it's kind of a good compromise. I generally had one custom dial set to 4K 30, another set to 4K 60, and another set to 4K 120 just in case I wanted to use it, but I stuck on those first two a lot, and I honestly would just shoot a manual mode with a 6.2 sensor as well when I was doing things like this. The big thing that I noticed that really sets this camera apart from all the other Fujifilm cameras before it, beyond everything I kind of talked about so far, is the new Fujifilm X-Trans 5 sensor, which is stacked on the X-H2S, which means its readout speeds are super fast, so there's virtually no rolling shutter. This sounds like a small thing, but to me, it's kind of inspiring me to do more filmmaking because it just lets me step up my caliber. And if I really want to push this camera up and capture fast moving subjects or cinematic movements of car scenes and out of cars, the fast readout speed can keep up with that. And that's really exciting to know. And I guess if you capture sports photography or anything in large bursts, it will go much, much faster. I mean, listen to this. That's insane. Speaking to how professional this camera can be, it also takes CF Express Type B cards, which allows for recording of larger uncompressed Pro video formats like ProRes LT. There's still a really fast UHS-2 SD card slot in here as well, which I use more than the CFX, CFX Express Type B because those cards are really expensive and for 4K 120, 4K 60, the SD card was fine. While this camera is a powerhouse, there are still a few issues that I've noticed over time. The first being, now that there's a dedicated ISO button on the top, like the XS10, you can't use the front or back dials to control ISO until you hit that button, 
which is fine, but since the camera's so big, having to reach up and hit the ISO button so then you can dial through just makes it a little more cumbersome and allows you to bump the camera a little more as you're using it. Not a big deal, and with a little forethought I was able to prepare for it in most of the scenes, but for a camera that's sort of hybrid video and got a little bit of a vlogging tendency with that front-facing screen, it would just be nice if everything was more accessible to use with one hand and a little more customization in those dials. Even everything with the camera is a little bit bigger than what I'm used to. Even the joystick is on the right hand side, but it takes a reach to get to as opposed to on my X-T3 or even the X100V I just tested where it was just always there and really accessible without having to readjust your hand grip on the camera. Not a bad thing, but just take note that the X-H2S might be a little more cumbersome to use if you're used to using something smaller like an X-T3 or an X-S10. I was able to get used to the PSAM dial and all the other types of things, but I just can't make my hands any bigger. Well, the battery life was excellent at this price, it would have been nice to see the company add in some sort of fast charging system. I guess most people wouldn't need that since you can just buy more than one battery, which is what I do in all my other cameras, but most of my other pro tools like my MacBook, my earbuds, my phone can all, even drones sometimes, can charge up quickly over USB-C. And the X-H2S just charges a little slow by comparison, so something like that would be nice to see in a pinch. The other thing that kind of perturbs me is Fujifilm limits some of its film simulations, which are the color profiles in the camera, to its newer cameras. So. On the X-T3, I have a lot of options. On the X-S10, there are slightly fewer options because it's not as expensive as a camera. And then on the X-H2S that's filming me now, there are the most options, which is really annoying because they'll give you a new camera with a new color science. You're like, wow, I'm really excited to use it. But then if you want to do a B camera or a C camera and have multiple you know, devices running at once, you'll have to either shoot and log and adjust all that later or step back to one of the older color profiles. Not a big deal, but it's something I always found a little annoying with Fujifilm cameras and I just wish that they would sell those or put them out through updates or something. It would just be a lot more fun to get nostalgic nag on my older cameras. There are so many things I've missed in this review in an effort to keeping it brief, but if you're a videographer with an older Fujifilm camera and you're looking to step up, I think this is the camera for you. It has everything you need to take your work to the next level and its price represents that, which is the only hard pill to swallow. Honestly, I'm very close to buying one myself just because the new AI-based autofocusing system is so head and shoulders above the X-S10, the X-T3, the X-T4, and so on. However, since it's the top dog of the camera lineup, I'm really hoping that as this technology trickles down into hopefully an X-T5 or an X-S20 or these newer Fujifilm cameras that will hopefully retain some of that smaller form factor that I really love, and then that'll be more of the camera for me. It's nice to have a camera that can do everything and has all these pro features, but part of the promise of Fujifilm and part of the reason I came to the brand in the first point was just you could get so much out of these little cameras that they would surprise you. You know, you could push them to their limits and they would be almost as good as a full frame Sony, but for half the price. And with the X-H2S, as that price climbs higher, it's even closer to being as good as a full frame Sony, but that price uh, persuasion isn't quite there as much. However, it's the top dog right now, and I'm really hoping that if I can keep my X-T3 for another year, then the X-T5 is going to bring this excellent autofocusing system to a smaller size Fuji, which is what I'm really dreaming of every night. Seriously, if they can pack this autofocus into something small and affordable like an XS10, maybe the next XS20, I guess would be the name, I would be so excited. That would be the dream vlogging camera for me. All right, I'm back for one last cut in because Fujifilm actually released the X-T5 in between me making this video and posting it, unfortunately. Either way, it's a great camera. It does bring the autofocus to a much smaller camera body like I was hoping, but that camera body is almost a pretty exact replica of the X-T3. So if you're hoping for a flip out screen like me and probably a lot of X-T4 owners, the X-T5 isn't it. So from now on, if you hear X-T5, think XS20, I guess, and we're just holding our hopes up for that being the sort of entry level video camera that still punches way above its weight class from Fuji. All right, continuing the rest of the video.
thanks for watching. If you like this video, check out my take on the X100V or my camera approach, the OnePlus 10 Pro, and it's Hasselblad inspired optics. Anyway, subscribe for more, and I'll see you guys next time. I'm Brad Bennett. Peace.